everybody and myself with names. We have Lana. Lana, not not Lana. She gets really. If you if you want to see that, get that look. Say Lana. <laughs> you get that look. Barbara, and Rick, Cheryl, Linda, and Dave. You go by Dave or David. Okay. Ah, gotcha. <laughs> All right. Good to have you guys here. Level two class. So. Oh, the commencement. Yes. Commencement. We'll, we'll work on it again. Yeah. Well, let's go through our breathing and our warm-ups, and then we'll work on the form a little bit. No, no, no. This is good. This is good. Yes, it's good that you're thinking about it. It's good that you're practicing it and trying it. So... Um, that's all very, very positive. So, uh, and it, it's, n it's not an easy thing to learn. Forms are not an easy thing to do. <laughs> well, but it, it's also very therapeutic. I mean, the, the, the Chinese used to do this to, for their health. And this movement of the arm is actually a really beneficial movement your, your neurologist told you he wanted to see more of this from you. He just didn't tell you why. So, um, and it's actually, as a teacher, I, okay, then we'll start Tai Chi, because I, I think this is quite interesting. So, um, why do they have these Tai Chi forms? What are the reasons for all the d different Tai Chi forms? Well, if you had to teach someone something that is 3D, um, so, you know, three-dimensional, and if you couldn't communicate through words, how would you teach them? How could you teach someone and have, you know, so, you know, like I could teach you and then you could teach someone else and to, to, to make it um, expand and grow. And that's where the forms came because um, in ancient China, there was like 13 or 14 different languages. And so you couldn't write down. And a lot of the people didn't know how to write. Um, and so they couldn't write things down. So the only way to teach them some of this was to put it in a form, a repeatable form that you can keep repeating, keep trying to do. That opened up a whole new world for me. Exactly. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, that's, that's a great example. <laughs> All right, right hand, fist, power, left hand, fingers together, friendship, tuck into thumb, humility. Thank you, thank you, thank you guys for being here today. Barbara, good to see you. How was Canasta? All right. Thus far, Canasta trumps Tai Chi on one, one day a week. Good variety. Um, speaking of variety, Tuesdays, 1 o'clock. Yoga class right here. Yoga for people with Parkinson's. We have two people who go to that already. Um, and I've been hearing great things. Pamela seems wonderful. And she seems like all of the instructors here. She seems very dedicated uh, to helping people with Parkinson's. So uh, yoga is another good thing to work on. Okay. Well, I'm kind of preaching to the choir here, right? Okay. But like I said um, last hour, they, you guys, you were standing on your heads on Tuesday, right? Okay. <clears throat> okay, mum's the word then. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm teasing. I'm teasing. No, I'm just teasing. <clears throat> it's, it's chair or standing and whatever. And, and she accommodates, my understanding is, and, and I had a talk with her, uh, that she accommodates it for the people there. So, yeah. Good. Was it? Yeah.
Yeah, she'll she'll do that. Yeah. Well, just like here, I mean, I'm sure you're going to be missing that class for either Jim Rummy or Bridge, but um, no, it's and and you have to leave early before class if you can, or give me a thumbs up to let me know everything's good. Um, I just don't want you like I'm starting to feel bad. I have to leave and you know use the restroom. I want to keep track of you to make sure you're okay. Uh, but I'd much rather you do a half an hour of Tai Chi than no Tai Chi. Okay. All right. Um, you guys know this well. Let's start with our. You want to learn some new deep breathing? You want to learn something new? So this can be used as a meditation also. All right. So, so okay. Got to give this a little bit of prep. So bear with me. This is called Qigong Five Element Breathing. Okay. The the Chinese believe there are five elements. They look at elements totally different than Americans do. And so your elements are earth, metal, water, wood, and fire, all right? Traditional Chinese medicine revolves around these uh, five elements um, in, in all different ways. Each, each organ is assigned to uh, whether which element it belongs with, and there's a yin and yang organ for each element. Um, I had a chart. I don't think I have it with me. I think it's sitting at home. That kind of explains a lot of different things. So we're going to do this Qigong five element breathing. This is a beautiful, this is another way to meditate in a lot of ways, all right? So it's centered off of our Dan Tian. And the Chinese believe all of our energy is stored in our Dan Tian. So if you find your belly button and go about an inch and a half below your belly button, which is about three fingers below your belly button and about three fingers internal, that's your Dan Tian. And everything is kind of centered around the Dantian as you do this. All right. So there's five different poses. The first pose is called Earth, where my hands are in front of my Dantian. So they're not up here, but it's in front of the Dantian. As I breathe in, I kind of expand the hand. And as I breathe out, I bring the hands in. So I'm not actually touching my Dantian. There's a little bit of space there, but I inhale and exhale. So that's the Earth stance. All right. Next is metal. You're familiar with this as prayer hands. Palms are facing one another. And as I inhale, I open the arms, hands a little bit. Exhale, push the hands towards one another. Okay? That's metal. Next is water. Careful with this one. Prayer hand position, water, I bend the knees. And then exhale, kind of gently raise up. You don't have to go very low with it. You just kind of sink a little bit. And then come up. It's almost like you're riding a beautiful wave, right? In a canoe, going through one of those rapids, right? All right, um, next movement is wood. The hands start palm up, down by the Dantian, and they make a beautiful circle, and they end palm down right above the heart. So right about where your neck is. And then they come back down as you exhale. So it's like you're, I imagine that like I'm rubbing my hands around a big log, right? Or a big ball, all right? And then the final move is fire. So we take, we start with our left hand, palm out. And then you take your right hand, you bring your fingers and thumb together. So it looks like this from the front and you bring it down and it comes over the palm of the hand. And then with fire, you like pull fire out and breathe it back in. Okay, so this is fire. All right, so what we're going to do, we're gonna do six breaths for each element and then after each six, we're going to return to earth for three breaths. All right. I'm going to walk you walk you through this. Um, you guys are you guys are my awesome students. So this is why I'm teaching you something new today. So this isn't punishment, okay? Come on. There it goes. <clears throat> ah, too loud. All right. So from that Wuji position. We're going to start with earth for six breaths. Inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. You'll feel the belly and hands kind of expand together as you do this. Inhale, exhale, inhale. Exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, 
and exhale. We move to metal for six breaths. Inhale and exhale. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. One more time with metal. Inhale and exhale. Return to earth for three breaths. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale, inhale, and exhale. We move to water for six breaths. Inhale, and exhale. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, Exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, and exhale. Return to earth for three breaths. Inhale, exhale, inhale. Exhale, inhale, and exhale. On to wood for six breaths. Inhale, and exhale. Inhale, and exhale. Inhale, exhale, inhale, nice and slow, exhale, inhale, exhale, one more time, inhale. and exhale and return to earth for three breaths inhale exhale inhale exhale inhale and exhale now fire left hand palm up right hand over the top Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. Inhale and exhale. Now, right hand palm up, left hand over the top. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Inhale. Exhale, inhale, exhale, one more time, inhale, and exhale, and return to earth for three breaths, inhale, exhale, inhale, 
exhale, inhale, and exhale. And pause for just a moment. Feel the body nice and relaxed. Beautiful. Now, look at your hands. Your hands are probably like nice and fluffy red, like the palms of your hands, usually. Now, sometimes they're warm also. Yours are cold? A lot, of time, a lot of times your hands after this one are warm. Oh, he's probably, oh, there's probably nobody at the front desk. So I think there's somebody back there. Let me, oh, thank you, Dave. I, he's probably looking for someone. He's down the hall here. Thank you, David. Um, anyway, Qigong, five element breathing, another way to meditate. You can just keep doing that in a cycle and keep meditating. Like go back to earth for six breaths. Earth, metal, water, wood, and fire. <clears throat> okay, all right. So that's our that's our breathing exercises. Now let's do our warm ups. Um, you guys know these warm ups real well, so we're going to kind of flow through these. All right. I'm going to add the breathing element in on the warm up exercises also now. Okay. So starting with the chin tuck, I'm going to give you the way that I breathe when I do these exercises. All right. Inhale the hands up in front of us. Exhale as we tuck in the chin. Inhale, hands come out, chin gently floats up. Exhale, sink the chin to the chest. <clears throat> Inhale. And exhale. Inhale, thank you, Dave. And exhale. One more time. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale and exhale. So we're trying to combine the breathing that we just did with the movements of the warm up. Okay, this is where Tai Chi really starts to uh, become very, very powerful. Uh, side to side neck exercise next. Inhale to prayer hands. Tai Chi ball, left hand on top. Exhale, right hand, right shoulder. Inhale to prayer hands. Right hand's on top. Exhale, left hand, left shoulder. Inhale, two prayer hands. Left hand's on top. Exhale. Looking right, pushing down left. Inhale, two prayer hands. Right hand's on top. Exhale, left hand, left shoulder. Look left, push down right. Inhale to center. One more time each side. Left hand's on top. Exhale, right hand, right shoulder. Inhale to center. Right hand's on top. Exhale, left hand, left shoulder. Inhale, back to center. Exhale, relax the hands down. Forward shoulder circles. Bring the shoulders back. Up as we inhale, forward, down, exhale. Keep that good posture. Inhale, exhale, inhale, and exhale. Now reverse that. Forward up, inhale, back down, exhale. Inhale. Exhale, keep it nice and slow, inhale, and exhale. Gathering chi, reaching for infinity, I bet you know how to breathe on this one, inhale, and exhale. Going nice and slow, opening the body, expanding, inhale, and exhale. <clears throat> One more time, inhale, and exhale. Touching heaven and earth, inhale to prayer hands, 
exhale, left up, right down, stretching the spine. Inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. Keep the body nice and straight. Inhale and exhale. Good job. Inhale, one more time each side. Exhale. Good job. Inhale and exhale. Inhale, two prayer hands. Exhale, relax the hands down. Carrying the ball side to side. Inhale, two prayer hands. Tai Chi ball, left hand on top. Exhale, left. Inhale the ball over, right hands on top, and then exhale to the right. Inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. Inhale the ball over, exhale to the left. Inhale the ball over, exhale to the right. Inhale the ball over, back to prayer hands. Exhale, relax the hands down. Shake your legs loose. Everybody good so far? Isn't it fun when you combine the two? <laughs> Sometimes, you and I were just talking about this, sometimes our mind is so wound up we have to get the body involved to calm the whole, calm the whole unit down, right? Um, our mind separates from our body and it, they start spinning off from one another. So at that point, that's when we try to connect them and Tai Chi is beautiful for that. And that's why this exercise is so powerful because we are truly connecting our mind and body um, together. And with this breathing, it just becomes really beautiful. And the really cool thing is you've got to learn the physical moves first. But once you learn the physical moves, then you add the breathing on to it. So like we were talking about, you know, you were asking me about commencement. Uh, commencement has breathing with it also. So just, you know, inhale, exhale, inhale, and exhale, inhale, and exhale. And so you can do that whole form, breathing in, breathing out, and become so powerful. So, so I'm just giving you like a little glimpse behind the curtain here. All right, lower body exercises, side to side. Um, we're gonna, I'm gonna keep going with the breathing part of it. Uh, make sure you have a chair next to you if you need it, all right? Those chairs don't slide well, do they? <laughs> it's like, <ugh. laughs> Inhale to prayer hands. Use your chair if you need to. Exhale to the right as you tap or float the left foot. Inhale through center. Exhale, push left. Tap or float right foot. Use your chair if you need to. Good example. Inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. Inhale, exhale, inhale, and exhale. Inhale, back to center. Exhale, relax the hands down. Pause for one second. Since you're doing two classes in a row, you pay particular attention to your legs. If you get tired, sit, all right? Don't overwork yourself. Tai Chi is there to revive us, not wear us out, okay? And we don't realize how much we use our legs. So until you get home and sit down, and then you're like, oh, I'm going to yell at Craig when I see him next Friday. Forward and backward hip exercise. Weight shifts right. Inhale, left heel. Exhale, left toe. Inhale, heel and exhale, toe. Inhale, 
and exhale. Use that chair, return to center. Weight shifts left, inhale, right heel, exhale, right toe. Use that chair if you need to, inhale, and exhale. And one more time, inhale, and exhale. And back to center, use your chair as we do the heel kick. Keep the body straight, keep the back straight, keep the knee bent. Don't forget it's okay to smile. Weight shifts right, inhale, exhale, inhale, and exhale. Weight shift, inhale, exhale, inhale, and exhale. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. One more time. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. Nice job. Bow stance, stepping out empty, keeping plenty of space between our feet, all right? Weight shifts right. Inhale, stepping out empty. Exhale, weight shifts forward. Bring the weight forward onto the left leg. Inhale, <clears throat> weight shifts back. Exhale, come back to center, pardon me. <clears throat> weight shifts left. Inhale, step out empty right foot. Exhale, keep plenty of space between your feet. Inhale, you're good. Exhale, weight shift, inhale, stepping out empty left, exhale, bow stance, bring the weight forward onto the left leg, bring that weight forward, inhale, weight shifts back, and exhale, inhale, weight shifts left, step out empty right, exhale, bow stance, bring the weight forward onto the right leg, Inhale and exhale. Pause for one second. So as we do this exercise, we first step out empty. Then when we want to weight shift, so as I step out empty, all the weight's on my back leg. So it's 100% of the weight's here. I have no weight on the front leg. As I shift my weight, I go to 70% of the weight up on the front leg, exactly, which leaves 30% on the back. Now as I come back, I go back to 100% of the weight here, which allows me to pick my foot up and come back to center, weight 50-50, all right? So there's several weight shifts that happen here. My first weight shift, I'm getting ready to step out. And I step out empty, but I haven't shifted my weight. Now I shift my weight 70-30, weight shifts back 100%, come back to center, and then even it up 50-50, all right? Weight shifts right, Step out empty left as we inhale. Exhale, bring the weight forward. That's a beautiful thing. Weight shifts back, all the weight goes to the back leg and come back to center, weight 50-50, gorgeous. Weight shifts left, step out empty right foot. Now weight shifts to the right, 70% goes to the right. Punch out left, exhale, opposite hand punches out, inhale and exhale, don't step out too far. One more time, keep your steps short, all right? Weight shifts right, step out empty left, inhale. And exhale, inhale, and exhale. Other side, inhale, exhale, inhale, and exhale. Uh, okay, I'm gonna come back. I'm gonna illustrate a point on that one, but let's do our ankle exercises. 
Weight shifts to the right, left foot, inhale, heel. Exhale, toe. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. And exhale. Weight shifts left, right foot, inhale, heel. Exhale, toe. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Weight shifts right, left foot, inhale, little toe. Exhale, big toe. Inhale. Exhale on the big toe. Inhale. And exhale. Then weight shift left, right foot, inhale, little toe. Exhale, big toe. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. And exhale. And back to the Wuji position once again. Beautiful. Shake your legs loose. Good work, everybody. How'd that feel? Okay. Yeah, I, I imagine you are. So she was here during the first class. So your legs are probably starting to. Yeah. Um, so one thing I was going to mention about the um, as your Tai Chi gets better and improves a little bit, like when we do that empty step out, um, sometimes we have a tendency, you'll feel your foot kind of strike the ground. You actually want to feel the foot kind of float to the ground and then shift away. And even as it comes back, kind of float to the ground. And this is what, when we're doing like going back to commencement again, when we do commencement, um, when we step out with that foot, it's an empty step and the foot just kind of floats to the ground. And then as we come forward, it kind of floats once again. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, heel toe. Yeah, it doesn't have to be flat, but it shouldn't jar the leg or the body. So like when you set the foot down, it shouldn't feel like you're doing this. Or if you're sitting down, your, your upper body shouldn't be shifting. It should kind of float to the ground, okay? Remember the old TV series Kung Fu with David Carradine? Anyone watch that? Long time ago. Um, they had him walking down on rice paper. And the first time he did it, you could see all of his footprints. No one remembers that. Rick remembers that. <laughs> um, they had him walk down like an aisle way. And he turned around and looked. And it was on rice paper, which is really thin. And you could see every footstep with the rice paper. Um, but after he trained, he was able to go down doing martial art moves, and there wasn't any movement on the rice paper, and that's because he wasn't doing this, but he was doing this, and setting down and shifting his weight. So it's part of the grace of Tai Chi, uh, but it also has to do with your legs being strong enough and your posture being proper, okay? <laughs> no, it's not. It's um, one, so um, a saying of Tai Chi is, um, stand like a great mountain, flow like a great river. And being able to flow has to do with when you can put all your weight onto one leg and feel really solid with all of your weight on one leg, this leg can do whatever it wants, including floating to the ground because you're solid on this leg. Nothing. Oh, uh, a floor. Oh, I, I, okay, this was over 20 years ago, well, probably 30 years ago. Yeah, I doubt if the Chinese had carpet actually either. So it was probably like a wood floor. Not fall on your feet, just set the foot down and shift weight. Right. <laughs> yeah, apparently it has. Apparently it has. All right. I tell you what, ask me ask me in a year. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, but it's 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 about the foot not moving as you set it down because when you do this, 
Like when I do this, my heel, the force of my heel is doing this, which if that was on paper, it would tear the paper. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. Yeah, your force is going. Okay. All right. You'll be first on it. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, that, that was the arms on the hot coal. Uh, okay, so leg strengthening exercise. You may want to watch on this one. Um, weight shifts to the left, right foot, cat stance. Tap, right toe to the front, empty. And cat stance. Right foot to the side. Cat stance. Tap, right toe behind us. Keep plenty of space between your feet. Cat stance. And Wu Ji. Hey, that's a good idea. Because I don't call out people's names when they're when they're doing something wrong. I just kind of make a general thing. But if ever I wanted to point out, if I call if I say Lana, you're not doing that right, you'll really pay attention, won't you? <laughs> I would not do that. <laughs> just thought of that though. Weight shifts to the right, left foot, cat. Tap, left toe to the front, empty. Cat stance. Tap, left toe to the side. Cat stance. And tap, left toe behind us. Cat stance. And back to Wuji. Beautiful. Shake the legs loose. Good work, everybody. Round two now is weight shifting. All right. Set the foot down empty. No weight. We pause. Then shift weight. Okay. If you want, I've got a report card in my backpack. I can give you that report card. You can grade everybody while they're doing the extras if you wanted to do that. Okay. Just wanted to give you a chance. You could, you know, help me out by grading everybody. Yeah. That was my mistake, trying to explain a principle to a bunch of teachers, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Diligent. <laughs> mm -hmm. Four. Yeah. Rick, you, you're not. Part, were you a teacher? Okay. Oh, I guess I'm considered a teacher, aren't I? Yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I pale in comparison. Yes. All right, round two. Now I'm, now I'm, now I'm a little nervous. I'm, then, okay. <laughs> oh, I could tell you some stories. Weight shifts to the left, right foot, cat stance. <laughs> Tap, right toe to the front, empty. Plenty of space between your feet. Set the right foot down. Weight shifts to the right, which allows you to tap or float the left foot. Keep the body straight, even if you're seated. Set the left foot down with no weight on it. Shift weight left. And cat stance. Tap, right toe to the side, empty. Set the right foot down without any weight on it. Now shift the weight to the right. All of the weight is right. Tap or float the left foot. And then set the left foot down. Weight shifts to the left. And right cat. Pause for one second. Come back to the Wuji position. May I use you in, as an example? Do you mind? And it's not, it's not necessarily a bad example. Um, 
So this is the way our brain thinks sometimes. I thought this was quite interesting. You were doing this exercise from the chair and I'm not picking on you whatsoever, okay? You were doing the exercise from the chair and I, when I said weight shift to the right, you did this with your upper body, okay? That's what our brain does sometimes, all right? And that's one of the things I'm trying to teach out of you is that when you say weight shift, um, from the chair, if I said weight shift to the right, you'd push down on the right foot, but not lean to the right, all right? And so that's one of the things I'm trying to take out of your brain is that when I say weight shift right, you don't go, okay, now I'm weight shifting to the right. That weight shift to the right looks like this with good posture, okay? Thank you for letting me use you as an example. All right, weight shifts left, right foot cat. We're gonna finish this one to the back. Tap right toe behind us. Keep plenty of space between your feet. Set the right foot down. That's why we keep space between our feet. Yeah, now weight shift back onto the right. Good job. Tap or float the left foot. And then set the left foot down. Weight shifts left and right cat. Return to Wuji. Excellent. Weight shifts to the right, left foot, cat. Tap left toe to the front, empty. Set the left foot down without any weight on it. Weight shifts left, all of the weight is left. Tap or float right foot behind us. Set the right foot down without any weight on it. Now shift weight right and left cat. We have an automatic switch in our brain. As soon as our foot hits the ground, we want to shift weight. Tap left foot to the side. We're trying to override that switch. So I set the left foot down while keeping my weight right. Good job. Now shift weight left. Upper body stays straight. Tap or float the right foot. Set the right foot down. Weight shifts to the right and left cat and tap left toe behind us, empty. Set the left foot down, good spacing, I like that. Weight shifts back onto the left, tap or float the right foot. And then set the right foot down, weight shifts to the right, and left cat. And Simon says return to center. Awesome, good job, shake your legs loose, get a drink of water, good work. That one takes practice. It's hard to get in the habit of letting the foot hit the ground and not automatically shift weight to it. Um, but it's a key to Tai Chi and it's a key to keeping you safe out there in the real world. Exactly. It is. Well, and the, another thing, and this seems to happen more with people with Parkinson's, and I can best demonstrate this like with a bow stance, you step out empty and you shift the weight forward. As you shift the weight back, get all the weight on the back foot and comfortable, then you pick up the front foot and come back to center. A lot of people, seems to happen more people with Parkinson's, they start shifting the weight back and they immediately pick this foot up and they don't have all their weight on the back foot, okay? Yeah, yep, yeah, yeah, exactly. Pardon me? Mm -hmm. Right, well, but, oh no, you exactly are working on it. And it's a, it's a combination of posture and leg strength and a lot of other things that are happening. And so, you're, you're doing exactly the right thing to work on it, and you just have to give yourself time with it, okay? Um, one of the things, though, is make sure that as you step backwards that you don't do this. You keep plenty of space between your feet, so when you set down, it feels really solid. Exactly. So you want to keep that spacing between the feet, okay? All right. There's a, in the, there's a book called Brainstorms 
uh, which is a really good book on Parkinson's disease. It's written by a gen gentleman named Pilferman. Uh, you guys as teachers would love this. Pilferman had, had does done a lot of documentaries. Um, um, and you guys have seen, I'm, I'm sure all of you guys watch public broadcasting. So you've seen Pilferman's work. He does a lot of documentaries. Um, he developed Parkinson's disease and in true fashion for the way he puts things together, he wrote a book called Brainstorms, which is, it's only four years old, I guess, at this point, maybe five years old. I don't know, time flies. Um, but it's very well put together. And so you guys might be interested in reading that book. He has a great part in that book about balance and all the things that, uh, that go together to, to make up balance, all right? Pilferman also did, this is interesting, this is before he ever got Parkinson's disease. One of his documentaries is called Frozen in Time. Um, and it's about Parkinson's. It's about a group of men, um, young guys, college guys, um, that cooked up a bad batch of heroin. Um, and it gave them Parkinson's disease. But it was truly, it was revolutionary because um, Parkinson's is, only happens in humans. They could not replicate it in lab animals. So it was very hard to study Parkinson's because they couldn't replicate it in lab animals. Um, but they went back and figured out, they, they found the common denominator was these kids cooked up a bad batch of heroin. I think they were in college at the time. Pilferman just wrote the documentary. He was not a part of the kids in college, just so you know. Um, um, but they figured out what they did wrong, and now they can study Parkinson's easier because of that. Isn't that pretty interesting? All right, so let's work on the form a little bit. Commencement. All right? So... I'm going to stand toward, I'm going to face you and mirror you as we do this, all right? So let's, let's practice the footwork just once, um, or well, let's practice until you're comfortable with it. How's that? All right, so I'm standing up nice and straight and tall. My knees are straight. Knees are not, I don't do a hard lockout on the knee. We keep the knees straight. All right, first thing I do, bend the knees and shift the weight to the right. Step out empty with the left foot. The toe is facing forward. And now I slowly shift weight from the right to the left. All the weight is now on the left. I bring the right foot forward and step into Wuji. Good. One more time. Heels together, Charlie Chaplin style. Bend the knees. Weight shifts right. Step out empty left foot, toe facing forward. Weight shifts left. Right foot comes forward. Center the weight. Beautiful. Now, hands, just on their own. Hands. I float the hands up in front of me, fingers facing towards earth. Feel the stretch on the top of the arm. Rotate fingers towards heaven. Bring the hands down to the Dantian. Circle the hands up to the chest and gently reach out. And now at this point, you can kind of drop the wrist, uh, the fingers if you want and come back to prayer hands. One more time, hands by themselves, then we'll put them together, okay? Any questions? Pardon me? Okay, so start with your hands at your sides. Now, float the hands up in front with the fingers facing towards earth. Rotate the fingers towards heaven, hands down to the Dantian. Circle the hands up to the chest, gently reaching out. You can kind of flex the wrist a little bit here and come back to prayer hands. Awesome. Two pieces of advice I would give you. Looking at this one from the side, as I bring my hands up, my arms don't go above my shoulders. Sometimes it has that appearance because of the flexibility in the wrist, but my hands don't go above my shoulders as I do this exercise. And the palms are facing one another. Okay? All right. Put them together, heels together, feet out, 45 degree angle, standing up nice and straight and tall, commencement. Float the hands up in front of us. As we sink down, now we bend the knees, weight shifts to the right. As I circle the hands up, I keep my body posture nice and straight, step out empty left foot, and then I shift the weight left as I extend the hands out, right foot comes forward, and back to prayer hands. Relax the hands down. Excellent. 
Make sure you're keeping that good straight body posture as you do this. Also, when the hands come down, that's when I bend my knees. Step out empty, shift weight, which allows me to bring the right foot forward, all right? There's a beautiful flow that happens here. When you talk about yin and yang energy, there you see all kinds of examples of yin and yang energy in this. So, heels together, Charlie Chaplin, Float the hands up in front of us, fingers facing towards earth. Rotate fingers towards heaven, sinking down. Weight shifts to the right. Circle the hands up, step out empty left foot, no weight on the left yet. Now shift weight to the left as I'm gently reaching out. Right foot comes forward, hands back to the chest, prayer hands. And relax. One more time. Don't shift that weight too fast. Two more times, what? 100 times to learn the move, 1,000 times to make the move look beautiful, 10,000 times to grasp the intent of the move. That's actually a Chinese Tai Chi saying. Float the hands up in front of us, fingers towards earth. Rotate fingers towards heaven, sinking down, weight shifts right. Circling the hands up, step out empty left foot, your weight is still right. Now shift the weight to the left, right foot comes forward, center the weight 50-50. And relax. One more time. Two more times. 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000. Load the hands up in front of us. Sink down. Weight shifts right. Step out empty left. Weight shifts left. Right foot comes forward, and prayer hand, and relax. Pardon me? Yeah. Best way to do it, practice it tonight before you go to bed. For some reason, when we go to sleep, information leaks out of our ears. Um, but if you practice it before you go to bed, you're more likely to remember it. Really? That's what I am here for. I th thank you for telling me that. Sure, you're here. You're getting some of that. Sometimes we hear things on the outside and it takes a while to get to the inside. All right, so just all in good time. Right before um, uh, the, the gentleman Mike was in the last class, when he walked out, he goes, hey, I just wanted to tell you, Got a Charlie horse last night, um, and he said that deep breathing helped me get rid of the Charlie horse. That was pretty close to what he said. Okay, <laughs> I try to be pretty accurate. Um, and, and there was one gentleman in class, I'm pointing because he was sitting right where you are. Um, he said, he's like, my right shoulder hurt me before we were meditating. It doesn't hurt me anymore. So tenseness, anxiety can cause a lot of issues. Yeah, there's actually um, one study said that um, stress causes 80% of the doctor's visit in, in America. Yeah, well, my wife is a cardiology nurse, so I see some of it. Okay, so let's touch on the next move is a really hard move. Actually, it is in a lot of ways. It's called open and close, okay? Um, but this is, um, so... This is what open and close looks like. You can do this one from the chair, it's okay. Open and close. So I joke about it being, um, but it actually is because what you're trying to do, I love the way Dr. Lam described this move. He said, if somebody watches you do open and close from the back, they'll say they're doing something, but I don't know what it is. And so here's open and close from the back. He's like, what are you doing? So open and close. Think of the second shoulder exercise we do where we're reaching for infinity. We're opening and broadening the chest, broadening the back. Think about that as you do the open and close. So as I do the open and close, I'm not pulling the shoulder blades together. But I imagine someone's like taking my shoulders and pulling them apart. Okay. There you go. So let's practice that a couple of times. 
So we inhale, expanding the chest, expanding the back. Yeah. And exhale. Inhale, expand the chest, expand the back. Exhale, keep your shoulders relaxed as you do this. If the shoulders are tight, you won't be able to get that expansion. Inhale. And exhale. All right, you're getting it, you're getting it. All right. So next thing, we're kind of limited on time, but I can do this next week also. Um, the next exercise we do in the warm-ups is touching heaven and earth. We're lifting the head up by the silk thread. You want to do the very same thing. As you open and close, you lift the head towards the ceiling. So let's try that a couple times. Inhale, float the head towards the ceiling, and exhale. Inhale, float the head towards the ceiling. Exhale, feel that expansion in your spine. Inhale. And exhale. Pretty cool, huh? All right, so combine both of those. Open the body, open the chest, open the spine. For our hand position, inhale, open. Exhale, close. Inhale, open, expanding the chest, expanding the spine. Exhale. Inhale. And exhale. This is one of the beautiful gifts of this Sun style of Tai Chi. Sun Lutang was a Qigong master before he ever became a Tai Chi master. And so there's elements of Qigong. This is one of the major elements. This is one of the gifts. You, you do this open and close throughout this form, um, but it allows you to open and expand the body because we're like, oh, I want to do, I want to do this commencement really well. And you get the body all tense. No, this isn't how we do commencement. We do commencement nice and relaxed. And then once we do commencement, we reward ourselves, open and close, and then move on to the next move. It's one of the, it's like a beautiful nugget in there. So don't just go, yeah, inhale, exhale. What's the next move? No, this is the move. Inhale and exhale. And then I'll leave you with one other thing because we're running late. Um, in the soon 73 form, there are 73 different movements. And some of those movements, like one of the movements, this is. That's one movement. I felt that this movement was so in one movement, and this is he considers this to be equal with everything that I just did there. Isn't that kind of amazing? All right, cool down exercise, a light leap, just slap the legs. Yes. Uh, look for new age music. Yeah, a lot of times you call it new age or meditation music. Yeah, tighten up all the muscles of the body and relax. Tighten up the muscles. Relax and one more time. Tighten up the muscles and relax. I think Dave's ready for lunch. Gather chi, inhale and exhale. Inhale, exhale, and one more time. Inhale, and exhale. Excellent. Have yourselves a great week. This is a great session. Yeah, this is, this is really nice. All right, thank you. Have a great week. Stay safe.